You're listening to the CIP podcast, The Study Broadcast, episode 14. I'm your host, Emily. In this show, we explore the world of study abroad, offering advice, insights, and travel stories, bridging perspectives and cultures along the way. On this episode, we'll be speaking with two University of Guelph peer helpers who are here to help answer frequently asked questions about studying abroad. Let's get right into it. Today on the show, we are pleased to welcome Zoe and Rihanna. To get started, Zoe and Rihanna, can you tell our listeners a little bit about yourself and your exchange experience? Hi everyone, my name is Zoe and I'm in my final semester of psychology here at the University of Guelph. I studied abroad during my winter 2020 semester at the University of Tasmania in Australia and I can't wait to answer some of your questions and help you on your study abroad journey in this podcast. Hi everyone, I'm Rihanna. I'm in my third year of environmental science at Guelph and I am going to be studying abroad next winter at Wageningen University in the Netherlands. Really excited to talk to you all today. What are the eligibility requirements to study abroad? What's great about the study abroad programs here at Guelph is that students from all programs who meet the minimum cumulative average of 68% are eligible to submit an application. And even if you have an average of 65 to 67%, you can still apply also, but you will have to complete an exemption request in the online application to outline the circumstances that affected your average. The other fantastic thing about the eligibility requirements is that any student in any degree program can study abroad and for many of our programs there is no language requirement so you don't have to worry about not being bilingual there's going to be a study abroad opportunity for you and even if you do want to study with a different language those programs are available to you as well how do you get over the fear of going to a new place well this is a really great question for me right now emily i'm uh getting ready to go abroad in less than two months. And you know, the fear is really there when it starts to get more and more of a reality. I have been finding that for me, reminding myself that just because something's scary doesn't mean that you should run away from it, that studying abroad is going to be a fantastic opportunity. And most importantly, that there's a lot of support systems for Guelph students going abroad and you won't be alone even if you are traveling somewhere on your own so that's what's helping me get over the fear of traveling very soon what is it like making new friends during your stay so i'm a very social and outgoing person but i was pretty nervous while making new friends while i was abroad i stayed in accommodation and they often ran events that we could socialize with other students at, such as barbecues hikes up the mountain wine and food tasting tours and surfing days when we went surfing i made friends with other international and domestic students and we kind of turned into a little surfing group um so we go to different beaches um together we rent um our wetsuits and our boards and everything and we just learn to surf together and have a good time it's great attending these events to meet other people because you meet like like-minded people and they share similar interests as you as well how do you decide between two countries this is definitely a question that we get asked a lot and it was definitely a very difficult part of my application process when trying to rank which schools were going to be my top five choices for exchange. I found that at the end of the day, it came down to considering what mattered the most to me in my exchange experience and then doing some research on the different countries I was considering to see what the key differences were on those areas that were important to me. So uh, considering the different experience on if you're going to an English speaking country or a country where English is not the uh, official language, considering different aspects of the culture and how similar or different it is from what I've grown up with. And then looking as well at the cost of living in different countries or things like that. I also found that when 
The list of the number of Guelph students came out for each host university in uh, December before the applications were due, considering there whether I wanted to travel with a big group of Guelph students or on my own was another thing that helped me narrow down which countries to go with. My biggest piece of advice um, is to go where you feel most drawn to. Um, I knew I'd wanted to go to Australia, so I applied to four different schools in that area. I ended up putting Tasmania as my first option because I felt really drawn to all the nature and the environment in that area. Is there a person we can meet one-on-one -on -one to discuss the options? Yeah, you can contact the CIP office and meet one on one with education abroad advisors and they can also set you up with a past study abroad student. So you can ask questions and hear all about the student perspective. Um, there's tons of peer helpers in the office as well um, that have gone through the same process as you. So I definitely suggest asking those questions, making those connections, um, following the social medias as well as a good way to get information and be reminded of the important dates. Also remember that we do have drop-in Q&A sessions throughout the semester. That's a great way for you to just pop by if you have a question that comes up. Are there any experience reviews on studying abroad in Venice? So Venice is a fantastic city. I've traveled there for a very short period of time before. Uh, at the moment, we don't have a study abroad ambassador profile for our partner university in Venice, but do connect with us in the office if you have more specific questions and uh, we can try and help direct your own research to get a feeling for what that experience will be like. There's also other information on our website about studying abroad generally in Italy uh, in other locations, so check those out too. Is the Spain language trip still happening summer 2022? Um, so the Spain language trip offers students the opportunity to study intensive one month Spanish courses in the summer at the beginner, intermediate and advanced levels. At this point, the CIP office is monitoring the COVID-19 pandemic situation and the impact it can have on study abroad. Despite the current situation with everything, I definitely suggest still applying and putting yourself out there. Are there other language immersion trips besides Spain? If you check out the CIP website, you can read about the summer language and culture programs that are offered in places like France, Germany, China, India, and then Spain. An important thing to note that these are not exchange programs and they involve a tuition fee paid to the hosting university. Additionally, if you are interested in language immersion for a longer period of time than the summer, there are some language immersion opportunities through exchange programs and you can check those out on the website as well. I'm not sure I can study abroad for a whole semester. Are there other shorter study abroad options available? We have some fantastic field school opportunities that are a much shorter length of time than the whole semester exchange programs. This is a great option if you want to travel with a group of Guelph students and study with a Guelph professor abroad. They range from two to up to six weeks, I believe. And we have uh, five trips planned currently for uh, summer 2022, which you can find on our website. And we've had some features of uh, all of these field schools on our social medias recently too. Take a look at all of them. <laughs> Yeah, so the field schools, they're much shorter in duration. They're usually two to six weeks, and they're usually run in about May to June. Um, you can hear about some of the students' experiences in the Italy field school and the Netherlands field school on some of our previous podcast episodes as well. Well, that's all for today's episode of the Study Abroadcast. Don't forget to explore your own study abroad opportunities on the CIP website, uaguelph.ca slash CIP or follow us on Facebook or Instagram. Our Instagram handle is CIP underscore Guelph. Thanks for listening, and thanks to Zoe and Rihanna for sharing their advice, insights, and travel stories. Stay tuned to our next episode, where we look to unpack the study abroad experience even further.